Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, June 16th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast. I've been determined length, episode number uh, 742. Um, and it's still Pride Month. Yay! Um... Gay. Now, what are we talking about? What, Gary? Uh, what? Woof. I just have a question. Does anyone woof anymore? Yes. Does anyone still wear a hat? Right. <laughs> that energy. <laughs> so we'll come back to this question in a moment. I felt like it was important that we have a little history lesson. Um. Because I learned some things in prepping this episode that I did not know. And I'm as old as Methuselah and have been around for long as fuck in the bear community. Yeah. So there's... Come on! It's, it was meant to be a joke, you literal fucking... <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> and I'm not saying you're not that old. It's a bit. Oh my god. The show it's just off already. Anyways, so since the beginning of the bear movement in the late 80s into the 90s, you know, our our community <laughs> loose use of the term community started developing its own identity and a communication style. Like we already had established by that point the leather kink community we had, the hanky code. So like the bear community comes along after that. And somewhere in the midst of all that, the phrase and or word, depending on how you view it, woof, W-O-O-F, entered the scene. And it has perplexed people for decades because it's been used to flirt, um, to give approval, uh, to, to compliment a person. Um, and it kind of got me thinking, and this actually comes from, I think last week's very episode, like, but do bears woof anymore? Like, no, I feel like, go, oh. <laughs> oh God, they're more like Chewbacca like, well, I think, right. I think it's kind of come and gone. Like, no, it's no, had no, its no, no, I'm saying actual bears, like the fur, big furry animals that are usually I... found in the woods and people talk about shit, about does it shit there? Uh, they go roar, 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 roar. roar, growl, something. So I started a, I started a research online. Um, so there's a bunch of links. There's going to be a bunch of stuff here, um, and then we'll come back. To the yeah, exactly. So the definition of woof from an article. Uh, on Scruff in the City from 2012. So 12 years ago. God bless the internet. <laughs> and it's time, like it's time machine aspects. So it says, the ubiquitous and obligatory expression of interest and affection found in gay culture, most commonly in the scruffy, furry, beefy, muscly subsection of fagdom, <laughs> written out or verbally communicated quote unquote woof is a common way to affectionately and succinctly say, Oh, I like you. Which I was like, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends but on this... how you say it, because if you're like, Oh, that means I find you hot. Right, right, right. So then the rabbit hole begins because I scrolled down 
And a comment on that article from June 24th of 2014. So almost 10 years ago from now, a person by the name of Bill says, it started at the stud, which was a, a gay bar in Fort Lauderdale by, it says, it says by a couple few guys. I think they mean a Typing couple guys. Typing his horn. Yeah. <laughs> And God bless the internet for it being permanent forever. A couple of guys as a tribute to Madeline Kahn from a scene in Young Frankenstein. It has nothing to do with Bear Origins. So then that leads to the rabbit hole of going to YouTube. So I put in the, in the show notes, the scene referenced can be found here on YouTube. Um, and so in the scene, Madeline Kahn is, I think, the bride of Frankenstein or a, it, so for those that don't know, uh, Young Frankenstein is a parody movie made by Mel Brooks and Can Gene Wilder in the movie. Not a surprise. Here we are. So, right. The thing is, is that this film is meant to be a comedy. It's meant to make fun of things. So years old, by the way. <laughs> right. So the thing is, is that as the Bride of Frankenstein, or at least that's the way she looks, in this video, Madeline Kahn's character does say woof. Mm -hmm. So it does seem to line up that a kooky yet quirky thing from this film from 1974 which is kind of a cult classic called Young Frankenstein um, is where this comes from however in the comment thread on the YouTube video that I've linked wow there's a correction that actually Terry Gar's character says woof earlier in the film when reacting to the idea of the creature, that being young Frankenstein, having an enormous Schwanstücke. And Terry Gar's version of pronouncing it sounds more like woof, as in W U F F. Woof. He said woof. Right. Yeah. Where Madeline Kahn use of woof is more like W O O F. It is technically a callback in the movie to the Terry Gar reference made earlier in the film. By the way, and there's also Madeline Kahn played a character called Elizabeth. I haven't actually seen the movie, but I have seen clips of this scene, so I do know. And I think she she said it probably gave it a little more pronounced, and that's why it's considered to be Madeline Kahn saying it versus Terry Gar. Right. So. In the timeline of the movie, Terry Gar's character is talking with Gene Wilder's character. And Gene Wilder is quoting notes from, I think, a, a, a mad scientist or something. And in the midst of it, they're talking about how everything needs to be proportional for the, for the creature, which happens to be Frankenstein. So Terry Gar's character is basically exclaiming that – in order for the creature to be large, like framed and all of this stuff, they will also have to have basically large genitalia. An enormous Schwanstucker. Right. By the way, Schwanstucker is not an actual word. It apparently is a riff on a different word. I didn't put that in here, but I actually looked that up because I was like, is that a real German word? And it's close, but not, not exact. So what she was basically saying in this parody film is that he's going to have a large cock. So later when Madeline Kahn is about to have sex with the Frankenstein creature, he like it's not seen on film, but it's it's um, not imitated. Implied. Implied. There we go. Thank you, David. <laughs> it's implied that he drops his pants or exposes himself to her. And that is what Madeline Kahn says. Woof. Like, <laughs> and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. whole thing plays out i did not know that that was the the this is so far the origin of the term that this is a totally understandable 
origin <laughs> of the term. It's all thanks to Mel Brooks that the bear community now has its own signature cat call? Bear call? <laughs> well, right. So here's the thing. This film made in 1974, roughly 20 years later, 18 years later, 20 years later, whatever, is quoted and apparently, like, is a thing. Like, so... Yeah. We're going to we're going to skip ahead a little bit um, <laughs> because uh, this is this this link isn't in the right order on the on the doc. There's a there's a YouTube video from 2012 from P-Town Bear Week. Um, and it says, why do bears woof? And it's a cute video. It's a very like like on the street journalist style where they're just literally asking anybody that's at P-Town Um why bears wolf and my favorite part of it honestly on a personal level is that i know two people that are in the video um and they have a <laughs> really funny kind of like comment or whatever and i was like oh look at us when we were younger we were babies we didn't know what we were doing um we were younger. <laughs> so then um there's a comment on a thread found on a website called universalhub.com and the thread is called the history of woof. Um, and so there's this individual that went by X woofer, X dash woofer, that on June 25th, 2013, at 1 31 a.m., <laughs> posted it says, Woof started in a gay bar called The Stud on Andrews Avenue in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in the early 1990s by three guys named Bobby, Ziggy, and Twinkie, aka Michael. After watching the movie Young Frankenstein for the hundredth time, the boy set off cruising a A1A for Fleet Week in a blue Chrysler LeBaron convertible. This is very detailed, by the way. Yes, it is. Wolfing and barking at all the hot sailors in uniforms as a tribute to the Madeline Kahn from a scene in Young Frankenstein where the monster unzips his pants for the first time. Seeing what the monster had, Miss Kahn couldn't say anything but her trademark, woof. Later that night at the stud, the guys continued drinking and woofing at hot masculine men and almost got into a few fights because some people thought they were being insulted. The stud being the number one club at the time, with tens of thousands of gay men from all over the world coming there every year, getting laid and woofed at, it caught on. Just like most things gay, if one does it, all do it. Now, for <laughs> us who were there, it is laughable to hear, so the next time you hear woof, laugh and think of Madeline. So this Aww. appears to be from someone who was there when this all like started. Right. And there's a couple of people I think that are corroborating the, the origin in a way. So I'm, I'm just really intrigued by this whole, like a, a film that was almost 20 years old. That was, that became a cult classic is sort of where this happened. And it was just a couple of people being goofballs basically, <laughs> you know, and like, having fun and they started this thing that became right pretty much like the thing. very much tied yeah to the community well and also it kind of feels instinctual at least for me for when i got exposed when i got exposed to the bear culture and people started woofing i'm like oh they like me or, oh, they like them, or something like that. It, it, it just seemed right. So let me ask you this before we get back to the main point of the show, the question. Do you remember the first time you were woofed? No. Sorry, sorry Jeff, was that a no? That is correct. I said no. trying to think wow mm -hmm. maybe I'm, gu I'm guessing not for david because <laughs> he's really thinking about it Dude, I'm, it I'm, probably, i have a maybe it, it was probably over 20 years ago so well, well so, over 20 years ago because uh, i didn't really find out much about the bear community until i moved here mm -hmm. And that was in 2002, 2003. And 
I'm just trying to go through that like first year or two, and I'm like, I don't really pinpoint the first wolf ever. Um, I feel like it was, I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is it wasn't a um, in-person wolf, but it was an online wolf. Mm -hmm. But it is possible that it happened at a bear run in Memphis, not, not Memphis, in Nashville, Tennessee, one of the first bear runs I went to. Mm -hmm. That's the only one that is jumping out at me. It's like the first time I was ever kind of woofed, but I could be totally wrong. Okay. I'm assuming you remember, Gary? I do. Because it was formative. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I was at a gay campground that I was mm -hmm. very nervous to be at. I had actually gone because they, it was bear weekend. Um, mm -hmm. There was two local bear groups clubs that were meeting there. Mm. Like this is the beginning of my bear community journey. Like this is like the pivotal moment that like I had kind of heard about the bear community and I had seen some pictures online and I had like lusted after Jack Radcliffe because like that was the thing at the time. Um, you know, and like all these things were coming together. And I found out that there were these two bear groups that were having a camping weekend at the same campground. And so I decided to go down for the ha like a half day overnight. Um, and I showed up at the campground and I remember that the owners were like, we don't really have any places left, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I wasn't I didn't bring anything. So I was uh -huh. just going to sleep in my car <laughs> because God bless 20 some years ago, I was younger and I was like, you know, young, dumb and full of cum or hoping to be, um, <laughs> you know, like, like I was, you know, but I was also very like, you know, new to the scene. Like I had come out at least what, six, seven years earlier. Like during college. So I was already out as a gay man. Like I self-identified like initially as bisexual and, you know, then later as a gay man. You were like me by now, by now gay later. Kind of. I, I mean, it was just, it was a more comfortable thing to do that when I was in college, I was very worried about like judgment and shame and stigma and all that. Um, and, you know, I do still to this day find the female form like attractive. I still feel the same. I don't want to have sex with a woman. So you know, I had to, I had to go through that personal journey. So that being said, um, I went to this campground, you know, because they were having this bear weekend and I was very intrigued, you know, it was very alluring. And so I went there and, um, I went like in the late afternoon and I walked around and I didn't know anybody there. I mean, I did not know anyone and so I was just trying to get a feel for things and scope it out. And like it has trails in the woods, you know, people hook up back there and there's like, you know, tents and cabins and RVs and there's a pool and a dance hall and all that stuff. And I, you know, went to the dance hall and I just kind of did a lot of observing. That's the way I am. Like, I'm very much like a, I mean, I own that I'm a voyeur in a way, but like, this was also just like, not my scene, not my environment. I don't know anybody. I'm very much out of my element. So I did, I slept in my car. And I got up the next morning and I was walking across the campgrounds from my car towards the, I guess the best way to phrase it is shower house. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say bathhouse. I'm like, but it's not a bathhouse. It's a shower house. Mm -hmm. Like, um, <laughs> it's, you know, got a couple of latrines, a yeah. yeah, couple of yeah. urinals and like, uh -huh. you know, two shower stalls or whatever. Like, and it's not a very big campground, but it was, of course, very full of people. So, you know, there's not many options. Right. So I remember walking across the open grassy field that was like at the center of it, because this particular campground was a um, had previously been a I think scout camp. It had also been like a football summer camp type thing. So it had right. this big elliptical center portion with a tr with a track, quote unquote, around it. Like the track is where everybody drove. Um, and so like the pool was in kind of in the center of that and like everything was around the outside edge. So I was walking from the one side to the other um, towards the, the shower house or whatever. And I passed this guy. It's funny because I can remember him to this day. Um, 
I wonder whatever happened to him. Anyways, he passed me and he wasn't exactly my type. Um, but he was like that vintage eighties full head of hair, thick, bushy beard, but trimmer build. Um, and he walked past me and I was like about four feet past him. And I distinctly remember hearing him say, woof. And I like nearly stumbled as I was walking because it was so <laughs> unexpected. And I turned around and sure enough, he's walking away from me, but he's looking at me. Mm. And he kind of gives me this wink and he has this big smile on his face and he just keeps walking. And I was like, what just happened? Well. And I, <laughs> I know now I got cruised. Like, like, but I didn't fully comprehend that in the moment. I mean, I, I knew what cruising was, but I didn't know what bear community stuff was. Mm. Right. Um, but I also knew what the term meant, even though I hadn't really been in the community. Like, I think I'd seen on message boards or like, the 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 BML or something. So like I kind of had a feel that I knew what what had happened. And I mm. and I got the energy. Like I got the vibe. Like it wasn't judgmental. Yeah. Well I guess it was. Um I mean it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't meant to be negative. It was meant to be very like, you know, positive affirming or whatever. It was right. surprising at the time. You weren't expecting it. Correct. And yeah. that was the very weekend that that morning probably within an hour, hour and a half of that, the two clubs finished their breakfast in the dance hall because that's where the meals were. And they're going to take a picture outside. And I happened to be outside the hall hanging around because I'm a little cubby and I have nothing to do. And I'm, you know, just waiting for them to finish their official stuff because I wasn't a part of the weekend, like package mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that the bear clubs were doing. And this guy says to me, like, they're trying to get together to take a picture. And he's like, hey, can you do us a favor? Would you mind taking our picture? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, you know, I don't mind. So I think they handed me, like, one or two pictures. And mind you, this is 1999. Yeah. So we're talking, like, almost 25 years ago. Oh, my God. Wow. Right. It'll be 25 years come August. Um, right. So we're not talking cell phones. We're talking like box, box o matic little mm -hmm. Insta camera stuff, right? Yeah. Using the film? S yeah, actual like film, film. And so I took, I think I used more than one because they, I think they handed me like one or two or anyway. So try to take the pictures and, you know, everybody say cheese. They're all in a big group. Damon, why on earth do you have a film? We'll talk about it post show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Freak. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> so anyways, we, um, we, they, they disperse or whatever, like, you know, and I'm just uh, 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 hanging out or whatever, just trying to take it all in, you know, and mm -hmm. I hear this voice out of the crowd as it's dispersing. And mind you, like I'm, so this, this tin shack dance hall, I don't know how else to describe it is like up on a, on a platform so the it's not a ground level. So like you have to mm -hmm. go up steps to get to the deck and the deck goes into the building. So right, the, right. everybody was up on the deck. So I was down below them about probably four feet mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. on like the dirt, gravel, like road, grass level. Anyways, I, so as I'm, you know, I, I was kind of, I don't remember if I was walking away, but anyways, they were dispersing and I was standing in the grassy area. And then I remember hearing this voice say, Gary? But like, Right, like they know my name and they mm -hmm. say it and I recognize the voice and I'm confused. And then they continue to say, I think they actually gave my full name. And I was like, what in the hell? And I like, I kind of see in the crowd and then I see this guy waving, Tom. And he's like, oh my God, what the hell are you doing here? And so now I know somebody. And he used to put on the LGBT dances at the college university I attended, which oh. was sort of nearby, like not really nearby. It was at least a good hour's drive, maybe or more the university I went to. But at that time, when I went to college during those five years, they had a local um, community center. And so he would rent out the community center and have an LGBT dance. And so the student organization that I was active in and, and it helped 
like do activities and stuff we actually helped work with them and like had these once a month gay dances basically so that way the youth could have a place to go because mind you this is the 90s and like there's not really the communities that we have today and all that kind of stuff so um he recognized me and we hadn't seen each other since i had graduated so it had been a couple of years like at least two years um and we didn't have a reason to see each other anymore because i left i wasn't in college anymore there was no reason to like for me to hang out in the college town Uh uh um, because it was a couple hours away from home where i grew up at so yeah it was a whole like wild serendipitous moment that they like spotted me and recognized me and so i went over to talk to them and they're like what are you doing here and i was like what are you doing here and they're like well it's bear weekend duh like like to them it was very matter of fact and they were a member of the berg bears which was based at you know in pittsburgh pennsylvania um and i was like oh really like and i'm pretty sure i did a really bad job of acting like you didn't know what was going on right 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 (laughs) Uh-huh. Right, right. And so anyways, we chatted for a couple of minutes and they were like, and they were, you know, Tom has always been pretty sweet, like super sassy, sarcastic, but like sweet soul. And was like, hey, if you if you came here, you know, to check things out, you might want to check out the club. Like they meet in Pittsburgh once a month, they do different activities, yada yada yada. And so that was the beginning of my life and my journey, because then in October, I went to my first potluck um, and made connections uh, and started doing things and joined the club um, that fall. And eventually, you know, later became uh, an executive board member at large and then became the events manager and then became president. And like, <laughs> like it just snowballed from there. Started all of that is and all of that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And now I'm all of that. Now I'm co-host of a goddamn podcast. All these years. Um, But but all of that. Yeah. 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 Like from that moment, and like I just remember that impact of that, that experience. Um, So going back to like when when that was said, uh, like about me to me, whatever. Like as I cross the grass, it 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 it's indelible in my memory because it hit me out of nowhere but it was i took it as validation right having been a a gay teen who had struggled with my weight like all of my life to that point had been a bigger guy had been made fun of was never athletic like was a band geek you know like was more artistic what you know had been you know verbally like you know called faggot and all sorts of things throughout school and these different things like i had struggled a lot and so while i came out in my freshman year of college i still struggled all of those like first seven years of my life because i just didn't feel i fit and then this is the beginning of the next chapter of my life where i realize i have a tribe i have a a place that i fit in with people and that was that that's what that moment was is like to be woofed out was like this affirmation thing yeah now in a way i'm pretty sure the guy that did that had no idea that's what that meant to me or what that impact would be he most likely was just kind of like well there's a hot piece of ass like yeah and i mean <laughs> where's the lie <laughs> right 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 i mean you know he was like he's like that's usually the reason that. why somebody was correct so it, it was a thing. It was like a, it was a touchstone in my life. So that's why I asked, like, I don't expect everybody to have that like mm-hmm. moment in their life that, you know, is pivotal or changes them in a certain way or, or whatever, or that they would remember, which is yeah. fine. Um, yeah. But it was, it was also kind of a uh, part of the zeitgeist of the time, which is why I, I decided to ask the question and <laughs> do this show because I was like, does anybody really say that anymore or have we kind of transitioned or evolved or moved on into a different thing? And, and the only place I know of this still exists is on a specific app. Maybe two. Like, I don't know of anywhere else that this is a thing. <laughs> and both my co-hosts grabbed their cell phones. So like, like, you know, it, I mean, it was, it was obnoxious on two. Okay. It was obnoxious because it was on t-shirts and bumper stickers and like license plate frames. And like, I mean, you yeah. couldn't go anywhere 
yeah. in the bear community without someone hawking, selling, promoting something that said woof. And I a, realized a bear the, paw with with the word woof. Groundbreaking. <laughs> right. Because and it was always confusing for people because bear paws are not dog paws. And I remember for quite a while, like we were so like part of this like weird culture thing that we would co-opt the dog puppy like anything that said woof on it as long as it didn't have a bone like it it sort of counted um <laughs> you know like like and it's wild and i realized the irony of saying all this because i also was the person who developed the bear run in pittsburgh with the board and the and the the pittsburgh bears that they had already had a thing called woof which was weekend of outrageous fun and that was what we named the bear run that was over Labor Day weekend. Um, so, like, it was a thing for quite a while. And now, I just don't know if it's really out there anymore or holds any importance. Hence, the question. 45 minutes later, we get to talking. Again, so <laughs> well, so here's my thought uh, on it. I will say it probably has a little bit less use. But I... Besides the fact that one app or two apps uh, reference Woof, um, I I mean I would still use it. Like when I growl at somebody, I'm usually hitting the Woof button. Um, and I mean I haven't really been out that much. I just don't think it's it's out there. Just probably not as pervasive mm -hmm. yeah i i think it so i wouldn't call it a fad because i don't think it was a fad it wasn't a shot and a shot a quick thing and then it fizzled out i know it has been around for a while we all have known that because it's been i think many years if it started in 25 nine, for me I yeah guess. yeah at least 25 then, it's probably been a little bit yeah that, yeah so it's been a minute. So the idea of it being, I, I don't want to say, I think the main thing is that I think Garrett, Jeff kind of hit the nail on the head is that it sort of faded out. It phased itself out for one reason or another. I, 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 think, I think it's, that's I, I wouldn't say fade out, just faded back. Meaning it's still there. People are still using it, but because of how commonplace it is, it's not as novel uh, mm. as it is as it was. That it still happens. Like even on my uh, my bear gamer uh, server, whenever somebody puts uh, NSFW picks, sometimes even some of the younger kids uh, throw up a wolf. Uh huh. So, yeah, I, I just don't. I I think it's because it's become so commonplace. Like it's still it's just this thing about our culture. It's not yeah. as big of a deal, so people aren't making such a big deal of using wolf left and right. Um, not everybody has seen Young Frankenstein over a hundred times in a very short span of time. <laughs> right. But, so and I also think. Go ahead. So that that that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I and I think another part of it, and this is maybe me theorizing things and maybe getting a little too meta with it all, but um, I wonder if because we you know we we have the shirt and everything, I wonder if consent became a part of the issue. Of it phasing down because or phasing away. Because it feels more like catcalling. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Well, and that and that brings up an excellent point. Like, ha has that happened within our community that we've, like, come to own that unsolicited interest is not cool? Yeah. Like, I don't want to say all the time because that's – that's a to me, it's a very gray area. Mm -hmm. Like – you know, wearing the consent is my foreplay shirt. Like I wore a different version. I'm wearing the the bear pride one today, but I wore the the rain the full inclusive rainbow one earlier today, on my way like where I was, and then coming back home. 
And sorry, something just clicked. Sidebar. Sorry. I stopped and I went to a drive through of a fast food place. And I thought the woman at the drive through tr- treated me really odd. And I didn't understand why. So the oh. car in front of me had gone up and they and there was a dog and the dog was in the back window. And so the, there was a conversation between the driver and the person in the window. And the next thing I know, the person in the window gave like a little strip of bacon to the dog. And I thought it was very cute and very charming, blah, blah, blah. And the guy in front of me says like, oh, happy Father's Day, blah, blah, blah. Like he kind of yells it out as he's like driving away. And I was like, oh, it was a fun little interaction. I pull up and she goes to hand me my stuff and she's like, did you have such and such order? And I said, yes. And her demeanor kind of felt weird like had what i had just seen so she hands me my drink and hands me my bag or whatever and i go to drive away and i was like that was odd and it just occurred to me that i was wearing the shirt and i don't think she read the shirt but it might have been the fact that it was the rainbow colors Mm. and now my theory is she's a bigot and she like saw the shirt colors and like was bothered by it Uh uh-huh but didn't entirely possible Right, but didn't exactly but, hide yeah. it. Anyways, the, yeah. my apologies it, for the it, sidebar. It just hit me because yeah. I was looking down and I was like, oh, wait, right. I was wearing the other version of the shirt. If I was wearing this one, she might not have like known what the Bear Pride colors are. Mm-hmm. Immediately, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And I do think I think that's maybe it in, in a way. Like, I don't, again, I agree. There's probably a the bit of a gray area here. I don't think unsolicited... You know, it be it be you know catcalling or whatever we want to call it has become a thing of the past. I do think that people are more conscious and more con- aware of the potential fallback or pushback that could could have happened from something of that effect. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it I mean, also could, depends on on how you approach the giving of agree. the compliment because uh, some some. Be, be someone might might like look at you and be like whoa and then like turn away it's like a casual yeah. Yeah. whoa yeah versus woof yeah but i mean yeah. it's sometimes in in those type of circumstances it's like yeah we're men we're pigs yeah they're gonna happen i think that's also another thing for it but i don't know it's it's one of those weird things where yeah. I'm not sure how heavy the idea or, or the more p- pervasiveness of the mm-hmm. idea of consent is uh, for people because I think consent yeah. has been around for a long time in, especially in the BDSM community um, but uh, even in the bear community outside that um I think a lot of us know, one, we're men, two, we're pigs, and usually just be somebody who's giving it, even if it's in the cat collie sort of way, is basically giving you a compliment. Whether you end up actually doing anything or they're going to be chasing after you, that's probably not going to be anything. But if anything, at least being like, hey, you're looking good. And it's a perspective sort of situation. And then it comes to people outside that whole communication, which might end up being problematic nowadays because people are thinking more along the lines of, hey, that's not cool, dude. And it's like, just giving him a compliment. And so uh-huh. moving on. Well, yeah. but I, I think that's... you have to consent to, to say, hey, you're looking good today. Right. I think... I understand what you're saying, Jeff. I think part of the thing is that um, intention and how it's received are like two parts of the sandwich, so to speak. Right. And so also it might be about like the mindset of the receiver. Mm -hmm. Like I think about this sometimes in the workplace that like I see somebody and I want to compliment them, but because I work in a, in a, mostly female environment sometimes i don't say things because i don't want it to be construed as anything other than the compliment even though pretty much everyone at work does know me so like if i compliment them on their attire or their hair or something i think they all take it genuinely the way i mean it um but i still kind of hold back like i don't because i just don't know where they are 
mm-hmm. in that moment as to whether or not like they would accept it as what it is meant, if that makes sense. Um, so like, I think, I think that's also a factor of it. So yeah, I could see where people might be a little reluctant to say it now or use it less because they don't know how someone might feel about it yeah. in that case. Damon, I mean, you were going to say something a moment ago. Like, what are your thoughts? Like, I, I, mean, I, I it, go ahead. We've kind of, it's kind of been said, so. Yeah, so. Um, I mean, I, I think that there's definitely a, I think there's been a lessening of it. Like, I really don't see it out there as much. Like, I just, to me, it seemed like it took its heyday. Um, it really kind of reached a peak and then it hasn't quite been the same. Um, but I feel the way about a bunch of things. Like I don't see as much stuff promoting fair pride. Um, and we've kind of talked about it in recent years with the podcast, like about the community and like its inclusivity and it's like Uh attempts to, you know, be, I don't know what the words are. Um, I I think. I think my one thing that you said there, I think, is what's bringing bringing a big change to the community is the inclusivity part of it. Because there once was just the bears, and that has grown and grown and grown to where it's not. While they're still kind of in the same community, it's integrated more of the gay community in it. That's not really community per se it's just becoming part of the overall lgbtq community with bear themed events versus necessarily bear events if that makes any sense just because at a lot of bear events they're probably going to be talking about some other things uh about pet pet BDSM, the leather, uh, 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 trans issues, etc., like that, which in the end all is part of the one big community of the mm-hmm. LGBTQIA+. So I think it's more of the reason why the bear community started was we felt outside the community, like we were welcome in the general populace of the gay community. Because we were big, hairy men, and a lot had had that something. Just we're, we weren't considered attractive. And so that's why the bear community itself ended up forming. Like-minded men and people who were attracted to them kind of formed their, their niche, their, their clique, almost. And have these specific bare ones. But as we go on, we end up having go on. It was like it was strictly bears, only bears and chasers, and blah, blah 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 blah. And then gradually some women who identified as bears, uh, uh, Miss Tammy, for example, right. ended up coming in. Then we have the whole trans issue, and we have trans people showing up to the to the events, trans bears. Um, which might have at one point not be considered as part of the niche. And it just, because we're welcoming all these people into the community, it ends up being we're just becoming more a part of the original community. And because of that closeness, Bear Pride, well, we don't need to be that specific. We're now becoming more general. We don't feel like we need to put out the strictly bear pride. If you, you can totally be proud of bear. We still have the bear flag. It's still there. It's just we're part of the LGBTQI community. And we don't need that separation that we did before. We, we don't feel that separation like we did before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. The second part, like, it's not as necessary. Yes, we could have our own events. Yes, we could do our things, but 
it's no longer kind of as you put it just us Mm -hmm. it's no longer a like-minded protection if that makes sense Mm -hmm. um and that's great you know it's great that that's a thing i don't think it's you know going to be one hundred percent pervasive in all people in in, the, in our community per se, but Inject. that is a great way to think about it. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. So to kind of bring it back to the conversation, um, maybe this part of the this wolf, um, the wolf, as it were, is <laughs> changed into a instead of just actually dec- declaiming, you know, woof, you just are like, I think you're nice. I think you're, you're, you're handsome. I would like to get to know you better. It's become part of a conversation or a, as opposed to being a declaration, it's more of a like, kind of what Jeff was saying, like, oh, you're, you're, you're nice. I think I would like to get to know you better. So let's have a conversation or throw it online, like sending a message and saying hello, as opposed to saying woof because if one of the things i saw in that one of the posts you made um there was a little poll at the bottom of it and it was like how does how do you how do you bad words um bad grammar (laughs) how do you feel about the use of woof is i think what they were trying to say and surprisingly like many were there was a good number of votes they were like meh i prefer real words and some were like i don't like it and some were like despise i hate that it says despise such primitive exchanges which whatever hey girl calm down but uh (laughs) but yeah but i mean the the majority of the vote was just it's a nice manly way to say hi they didn't put manly in quotes i did that um um, nice mainly way to say hey, which I think you know that's kind of what it be- has become now. Is we just say hey now. We don't need to say woof or grr. I mean, yes, you can do it on the on the apps, the apps that still do it, Growler, Scruff. Um, but I don't, I don't think you you don't get that as much anymore. I mean, well, let me rephrase. I probably don't get it as much, but I'm not usually the um, out there as often. But I'm sure um, <laughs> Jeff moving to a new city and Gary, who has traveled to other places and maybe gotten on the apps, are getting the fresh meat, oh my, like wolf burns growls. I've, I've gotten more, way more highs than a, a wolf. And whenever somebody says wolf, I do a thank you exclamation point. Because I always take, I've, and I think that's just how I grew up when when I learned about the bear community, started going to events in the late 90s, even before I was 21. Um, because we would have like, there was a coffee night and then there was dinner after. And then when I turned 21, uh, they took me out to bars or ran into my cousin, that sort of thing. Um, it's It's just been so pervasive. And I, but I still know for certain people are still using it. Yeah. Uh, because, I, man, uh, one of the people I play with in, in my D&D game, he sometimes has, has that woof and stuff like that. So uh, it's still being used. Um, so it, it's just definitely not the major way of bears complimenting people. Yeah, I mean, I do think that it's used less. Um, I think it all goes hand in hand. Like, I do think like the community has kind of evolved in various ways. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing I've seen as a trend over maybe the past two or three years, maybe since COVID, is the body positivity movement. Um, It's not always called that, but I know that there's a lot more like ownership of big bodies and being proud of them and like, and people like liking them and loving them and like them being sexy. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the like, uh, 
the increased proliferation of self-made content um, has changed the landscape a lot because now it's not the studios that are controlling the media of like what we see. Um, while Brandon has done, in my opinion, a really good job with um, Stocky Dudes, like to put out like alternative bodies, quote unquote, like as far as like the their entertainment, I think, mm-hmm. you know, the ability of technology to come forward and all these platforms now, you know, that people just do things and sometimes they film it. And, you know, and then they edit it and they put it out there and people appreciate it. And I think it's really changed the landscape of like what you were talking about, Jeff, like the origins about how we felt in gay bars. Like some of us felt we weren't quite accepted or found it difficult to meet other people who liked us and we liked them because we weren't fitting the model of that time. Um, You know, it's it's multi-layered. Because we had the AIDS epidemic going on in the late 80s. Um, and, you know, so the, the, that ravaged the MSM community in a way that made it difficult for people to feel comfortable, like, with being with other people. And, you know, this Jim Bunny kind of aesthetic started i think coming into play because the idea was like look at me i'm healthy because i'm physically fit and wow. is really super messy um as a subject matter and like as a as a concept when you think about it that like people were intentionally going to the gym to get laid and like i mean that still happens today but like this is different though this is like i want to look healthy mm-hmm. because People are dying all around. Um, And in the midst of all that happening, another layer is like, we don't want to be these surfer body blonde, like, you know, six pack ab wearing tan, you know, swimmers, which was like kind of some of the aesthetic that was coming out, if I remember correctly, like the Calvin Klein model era stuff like there was just a lot of this like masculinity that was being presented but it was very nubile i guess is the best way i can phrase it and so like there were always men who were hairy period like and you know i think there was like this shift towards owning your I, you remember this like we used to talk about the her sightness like we would use these words to talk about like how hairy a guy was and like that was a part of the bear code and yeah just it, it was this whole masculinity um, presentation aspect and i think that all that being said we're like you know 40 plus years now down the road or 40 years down the road so to speak less than you know and now the bear community is like just a part of the broader communities and so yeah there are bear events and there you know are bear dances or whatever and some different stuff but i think it is much more taken into account that like it's much more, uh, God, I'm struggling with this. The only thing that comes to mind is saying welcoming. And I don't think that's the right way to phrase it, but I think it's more open in terms mm-hmm. of like who, who ascribes the label or, or, you know, feels that they're a part of that. Right. Um, and also like we've had, we've gone through generations now. So like we're on like what a third generation of individuals within the community that are younger and they're choosing their way that they express themselves and how they see themselves and those type of things. And I bring that up because I think that's a big piece of it. Like I spent yeah. time this weekend around some much younger people. Like I'm definitively old enough to be their father. Um, if not, uh, not quite grandfather. Yeah, so you gotta be careful with that word. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> so, but like their, their, their mannerism of communication and their thought process and how they interact with each other is just different. And I took that as, like, interesting to observe. So, to me, it didn't bother me. I can see where it could probably, you know, be uncomfortable for other folks. I bring that up because I think all of that is 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 a mix. Do you know what I mean? In this, like, aspect of how people relate to each other and what they say and what they do. And so there may be, you know, a current generation that doesn't really feel that it's necessary to ascribe themselves as bears, quote unquote, or, like get 
tattoos with the bear pride flag or you know this kind of iconography and stuff that right. we all went through well i say we all a lot of us went through like in the, <laughs> the 90s you know in our 20s into 30s kind of stuff so um yeah like i i mean i i guess there's a part of me that feels like well perhaps this um will be you know changing you know, in another five to ten years, we may see that, you know, that's not really quite the thing anymore. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's I, I, I could see that. I could potentially see that being a thing. I don't think. I don't worry, though, if that makes sense. I don't think we have lost the culture. Like, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think that will ever go away. Um. I know we had an episode a while back where we were talking about like the lock loss of bear runs and all of those things and where it's going, but um, I don't think it will ever go away. No. I just think, as you were saying, it may evolve into something different. Um, no, and it, it already has. Yeah, honestly. in a way, and I feel that that will be. My hope, let me rephrase, will be that those that are charting that path and moving these things on um, find the words or the culture or what, whatever that feels right for them. Because I think that, you know, as Jeff was mentioning, the reason the bear community started was because we didn't feel like we belonged. Mm-hmm. And I, my hope is that there won't be a reason for that to be a thing. That's very well said, Damon. I mean, and isn't that kind of like the broader expectation for just our community? Like, I don't mean the bear community. I mean, just like LGBTQ. Like, like mm-hmm. if, if, if to take an IP, like if Star Trek philosophy concept is that we become a broader more accepting like society of existence like we will move beyond all of this and Mm -hmm. it won't matter how you live what you do who you love all of those things you'll just be you right yeah that would Uh, would be amazing if anything there was always a venn diagram between the bear community and the lgbtq general community Mm -hmm. where we were part of it but we were just a little section of it and i think that section is just growing a little bit more integrated into it but people are still identifying as bears and because of that identity still people are trying to be proud of it in their way again sometimes using wolf as an example um, and uh, still, bear runs still exist, and hell, even there's even a bear union now. So there, there's all these different things that are happening, but everything is becoming just more of, hey, we're instead of being this separate thing, which is associated with the the LGBTQ community, we're now more part of it than we were before and and that's where everything is the venn diagram is becoming more crossed you could say right so let's talk about ice cream shall we okay here's the thing like while researching this episode and putting all this stuff together like i saw like this this food post come up a little while ago and i was so confused and i remember kind of looking and then this thing came back around so Here's why it's relevant to this. Um, There's a Twitter account and then an online store that are going to be linked. Um, Someone was sharing this stuff from a company called Sebastian's Ice Cream. Um, For everyone here in the U.S., calm down, girl. Uh, Because when you see this and you want to order it, uh, just be aware that the business is in Manila, Philippines. So it is not anywhere conveniently nearby that you could order um, to get it shipped cross-country like tomorrow. Oh, God. Yeah. So it's June and they have pride pops. 
like popsicles mm-hmm. that are multiple flavors and colors of like various pride flags. So they have one that's gay pride, one that's trans pride and one that's bear pride. And this was the first thing that I caught that I was like, oh, my God, how cute, like a little bear pride popsicle that has all these flavors and stuff. And I kind of looked and I saw that they also had a pride month um, I- rainbow ice cream cake. What I did not know until recently when I was searching this is they also have something called Woof Bear Pride Ice Cream Cake. And it is it is legit. It looks legitimate like it's on a web store. This doesn't seem to be a spoof. Um, So it says as a description, a berry delicious ice cream cake in the colors of the pride bear pride flag layers consisting of from top to bottom black cocoa cake with Oreos. Black sesame ice cream with black sesame brittle. I just realized we're reading it backwards. It's from the bottom up. Anyways. Oh, no, it is from bottom to top. Anyways. Condensed milk ice cream with uh, pastillas de leche. Mocha cake with sliced almonds. Salted butter caramel ice cream with toffee crisp. Nutella ice cream with Nutella crumble. And chocolate cake with peanut butter drizzle. It That's sounds delicious. To get the- <laughs> right? Just saying, right? right? Out, like, like I'd, I'd, I'd buy, I'd buy a cake. Like, it sounds delicious. There's some very interesting flavors here. Like, like I'm very curious about, you know, like the the mocha cake with the sliced almonds, the the condensed milk cream cake, like all of these. Oh, black black sesame ice cream. I'm very I'm very very curious about some of these things. I'm like, hmm. Right. Hmm 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 hmm. Um, well, I can't get it. But. it. Right. It's done in layers, so it looks like the colors of the bear pride flag. Um, right. the photography is gorgeous. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's wild that this is out there and that you can, um, you know, Nutella purchase ice cream it. Cream is like pink ish. I guess. When I think of Nutella. I don't think pink. It it may be the picture because it's it may be a it's supposed to be. Oh gosh, I have to pull up a bear pride flag. Uh, it's been a minute. <laughs> I'm which trying to color, figure out where wait, it is. Which color is it on my shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got chocolate brown, which is the, the top red? layer. And yeah, it's kind of an orangish color. I yeah. think it's a bear if, pride if it's flag. Supposed to, if it was supposed to be the if it's with the bear pride flag, yeah. it's supposed to be the orange, like the red the red hair. Yeah. Um can I can I come over here? Can you hear? Yeah, so there's the flag. Oh, there it goes. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's meant to, you can't really see it, but it's the second one. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, in the Philippines, they use pesos as their currency. Uh, mm-hmm. 1,750 pesos, and the current exchange rate in the U.S. is $29.81. Yeah, so it was right. Yeah. It's pastillas. De leche. Yes. The two L's are pronounced like a Y. Gotcha. Um, so you could get a nine inch cake, nine inch diameter. Um, and those are probably real nine inches, not AOL. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so there's a part of me that's like, bitch, if this was, if this was in the U S I would expect to see this at every like pool party. Like bear, bear prot luck, bear. Right, luck. right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Girl, look at this bear pride ice cream cake. Like I totally would see that like being the kitsch thing and, and whatever. So the fact that they call that it says woof ice cream cake just threw me off mm-hmm. in a way because I was le- not expecting that. Um and part of it is probably because they have a bear pride pop, like the popsicle. Um and it's pretty much the same flavors. Uh, black cocoa, black sesame, condensed milk, coffee, caramel, Nutella, chocolate, milk, ice, you know, um, all in one popsicle. Pride oh. Month exclusive. So, like, yeah, I, I, it's just, it's so wild to me. So there's a part of me that, like, wishes I was good friends with someone in the Philippines mm. <laughs> to be like, well, I don't want you to hook me up. I just want you to go get it. 
<laughs> report out on how it yeah. is. And and Let these are the only things they have. They have a whole bunch of stuff. Like they have um, sugar free vegan stuff. They make gift boxes. They do other ice cream cakes. Like so that's why I'm like this. Uh, they call them chili burgers. They're like ice cream sandwiches. Um, they've got things called poppets, which I think are like um, okay, I'm ice close cream now. like nugget things. Because I need to stop looking at that because it looks so, so fucking good. Get, get Listen, the, I would get the flavors. Yeah, it's a heart. This damn website. Get the flavors um, of the the, the uh, uh, rainbow ice cream cake. We got ube cake at the bottom. Uh, blueberry ice cream. Avocado ice cream. Mm -hmm. Lemon cake. Orange sherbet. And strawberry sorbet topped with sweet cream ice cream with crunchy milk crumb and decorated with rainbow white chocolate and edible gold glitter. But so avocado they have ice cream. Yeah, avocado is a healthy fat. Uh, makes I, a creamy consistency. I know, but when it, especially amongst the, those other flavors, I'm not sure about that combination. Well. I mean, I, I think they're mostly going for the colors first and yeah. then the flavors second. So I'm sure they could now, have done something like a lime and might have gelled a little bit better. I don't know. They got a lemon, which is right above it. Yeah. It's a lemon lime. Right. But those can kind of taste a lot alike. So that might have been an issue. So they have an FAQ page, just so everybody knows, because I bothered to look. It says, do you deliver to? And then it has a blank. Um, our current delivery range is within Men Menetra, sorry, Metro Manila in the Philippines. Um, if it's in Quezon City, it's uh, 150 pesos as a flat rate. And then if you go beyond that, um, Quezon City, other areas, New Manila, San Juan, and some other uh, Makati. Like, I can't pronounce all these things because I don't know Tagalog. Um yeah, it's 250 peso. So, uh, no, it does not come out of the country. It does not get shipped to the U.S. Like, that's, that's just not a thing. So, yeah. Sorry. But perhaps somebody will be compelled here in the U.S. to, you know, um, do this at a, at a certain point. But I just was really intrigued by this, that this is a thing that they came out with. Um, and apparently they've exists. been around for a couple of years. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's the thing. Oh, and then apparently you can get a whole gallon of ice cream. But you need a three to four day lead time for them to make it. But you can like mix flavors together. So, yeah. Interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it's a whole thing. Classic leche flan tort is a thing that they do apparently. <gasps> Whoa, what is this thing? This looks cool. Damon's like, just, just stop. Rat hole. It's called a, it's a combo surprise, cake. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's a but combo cake of 12 me. slices of ice cream cake. So they've got rainbow, dark chocolate decadence, leche flan, tort, birthday cake, strawberry six ways, and something called Sappin' Sappin' special. And you can pick how many of the different things you want to make up the full 12 slices. Anyways. Fell down a rabbit hole again. So all these yep. things will be linked, including so you can check out the pictures and the rest of that stuff. And maybe if you feel so compelled to like channel your inner Ina Garten or Martha Stewart, you can try making one yourself. I don't know. We appreciate mm. all of your uh, attempts at making a bread cake, whether it's ice cream or not. Yeah. Because you can easily do, do it without ice cream. In fact, you can... You don't necessarily need to use flavors, just a nice food dye. Yeah. So, uh, who knows? Maybe, you know, we'll revisit this in a couple of years because something strange will happen and there will be a resurgence or people will just officially stop saying woof. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think it will stop anytime soon. I think it's too pervasive in our community. Uh, Zoomers who are listening to this, uh, you are the newest generation. Please uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, the woof. You can do that in many ways. Because I think that's the end. Mm -hmm. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com, leave a comment on the blog, leave us an email at comesoutloud.com. 
gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 CLL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can also follow us on Facebook or YouTube at Comes Out Loud, the appropriate place of the URL, or join our Telegram chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash CLL. Join the entourage. You can also find out when we're planning on recording these shows by checking out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. Check out the various merchandise that we also sell over on Zazzle at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at paypal.me at uh, slash comes out loud. You can find us on the various podcasting platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, we actually have a podcast right here on YouTube. Like you can find me anywhere on, on the internet. It's box, that box, puppy box, cut box, something or other. Damon. <clears throat> sorry. I had a real... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Something's getting my throat. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Anyway, um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCup79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter, or Pup Umber79 on Blue Sky. Both of those are not safe for work. For safe for work stuff, you can find me as D-M-A-Gamer79 on TikTok or Twitter. Gary? If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, I need to do a thing that I should have been doing this entire time. Totally forgot that I was doing. Bumping over. Where is it? I've got way too many windows up. There it is. Say well to everybody. Woof. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Bye. <laughs>